Hi guys, welcome back to another video. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Helen from Crafty So and So. If you have been here before, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be tell, talking to you about six things I think you should know before you start sewing. So if you're thinking of getting into sewing and you're just not sure and you don't know where to start or you're a little confused about what you need to be doing, how to start, what you should be sewing with or how or all these kind of questions you might have, these are things that might just help clarify a few of those confusing questions and help you decide where to get started, how to get going. So number one on our list is about new fabric. So whenever you go to a shop, order online, anywhere that you are buying new fabric should always be washed and ironed before you use it. So this is before you cut it, before you sew it, everything. Always wash your fabric on the recommended washing. Uh, some will be different to others, so I'll double check with the, the person who's selling the fabric or you know the recommendations online for that type of fabric. This is to get rid of any remaining chemicals. It helps any fabric that is will naturally shrink, shrink before you make anything from it. And it just helps get rid of anything else that's in there, loose fibres that will you know kind of wash away. This is definitely important if you are looking to sew clothes, just because obviously you don't want to make something that fits just nice when you've sewn it, wash it and then it shrinks you know even just one size um i have done this before so i advise not to do it <laughs> it's not fun when you've spent so long creating something so nice for you or for somebody you love so number two on this list is you should get comfortable with your sewing machine so whichever one you're using whether it's a borrowed it's a you know a quite a, a standard beginner one or even something that you've inherited um i would take some time to get used to your sewing machine just use some scrap pieces of fabric, whatever you can find, even if it's leftover curtains from grandma's house three years ago, old pyjamas, whatever you can find as a scrap fabric, I would just test out all the different stitches, uh, thread up your sewing machine, unthread it, thread it again, you know, do all the different kind of things you can do, try out all the stitches, um, this is something that I wish I'd been told when I first started sewing because I just pretty much wanted to stay on straight stitch and didn't want to change anything on my sewing machine. I was terrified and it wasn't until someone sat with me and went through things with me that, you know, I then started to feel more comfortable knowing what did what. Uh, I have a sewing machine so I can vary the stitch length and the stitch size um, when it comes to zigzag stitches I can change them into tight stitches or to longer stitches so I have two dials that kind of coincide with each other um, I'll show you a picture of my sewing machine or like some footage so you can see um, and I just spent a lot of time playing around with those stitches to work out what works well what I like what I think would work on what kind of project I even kept like a little like notebook with um, these different stitches in on pieces of fabric I stuck that in made some notes just because I found it so easy to refer back to it if I had a bit of a questionable time um, obviously at times I was trying to use different fabrics so certain fabrics will need different stitches um, stretch fabrics also require different kind of stitches so play around with different materials and, and the different stitches and the different settings on your machine so then you can get used to how it works how it feels and then you and your machine can get along and you'll know exactly what's wrong when something happens another point I really wanted to make on a sewing machine is the foot pedal not something I think people mention all that much but to me a foot pedal is like the accelerator on a car. Obviously here in the UK um, we drive manual but either way still if you if you know how to drive and you know the feeling of the accelerator on a car obviously the, the more you push down the faster the car is going to go. The exact same with a sewing machine the faster you the more you put down pressure down on the pedal on a sewing machine the faster it's going to go. So you spend some time getting used to what speed is comfortable for you. Start off slow, obviously, and build up. Sometimes when you're doing a straight stitch or just a straight seam, it's just easy to all kind of like guide it really quick through the machine. Um, but then sometimes with curved things or more intricate pieces of sewing, you want to take your time and really kind of control the situation. 
So number three on the list is to create a basic toolkit. Um, you can find things in your house, you know, everybody has some sort of tape measure, whether it's one of those, you know, ones, to, you know, your toolkit. Just if you're really like not sure and you don't want to invest a lot of money, just get a few simple things. You can find tape measures for a pound 50p in supermarkets. Um, supermarkets often have that little like section of sewing thing, like sewing things, like a little, you know, um, hemming tape and thread needles. If you don't want to invest a lot of money and you're just really not sure that sewing's going to be for you, pick a few of these things up, create a little like sewing tin in a bag or a tin, um, or even just like a little case, whatever you've got, Tupperware, anything. Um, put it together and then you've got something that you can use for when you want to start sewing, whether it's by hand or by a machine. Some of the things you will want to take into account is things like pins, sewing needles, tape measure, scissors, Fabric scissors are very different to normal scissors, I'll just point out. <laughs> but if you've just had got a pair of scissors at home that, you know, you're just testing the waters, use those for now. Um, just make sure there's no food stains on them. Uh, and some other things, you know, like maybe a pin cushion if you really want, but it's not a necessity. And some scrap pieces of fabric just to get you going. I would also invest in a seam ripper might not want to because you there's there's this whole thing that you don't want to have to tear anything apart that you've just sewn together but it will happen and you don't want to have to do it with big clunky scissors into a little seam so I just use a little seam ripper you can get a smaller scissors like a little like nippers and um, they work wonders <laughs> number four on this list is pick a beginner friendly project I have about I think 10 maybe projects that uh, I've created a video so I'll link that in the description below so you can check that out. Um, pick something that you want to make but it's also very beginner friendly, very easy, very straightforward. The simpler the better because I think it gives, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in starting simple and building yourself up because then you've just got the, you can build the confidence and you can really like enjoy it, get to know what you're doing, how you can control the situation and it, I just, I think it's a great idea to start small and build. So with the beginner sewing projects you can find anything from um, pin cushions to pillowcases, reusable face wipes, there's so many different things you can find that are literally like just sewing two pieces of fabric together in a, in a square, turning them through and you're done. It's really as simple as that. These are things that you can also do with children if you're looking to get your child into sewing. Um, these are all really beginner friendly, really easy, simple and a lot of these in my list you can do with scrap pieces of fabric that you've just got laying around at home. So number five on this list is gather together some fabrics. Don't go out and spend a load of money on fabric. There's no need. Go to the charity shop. They often have bedding and curtains and things like that for really cheap that you can just cut up and make into quilts, make into pillowcases. You know, just use it to do all your test stitching, all these type of things. You know, the you don't want to be spending a lot of money on something that you probably are not going to keep because... I don't think many people keep their very first sewing project. I know I haven't. So I also like to keep hold of um, old clothing. That's a really good way to kind of get used to fabrics as well. So you can look at what the make of the fabric is, uh, do some research on it, feel it, stretch it. It does it stretch. If not, you know, what's it feel like? Would it be something you would wear as clothing or is it something you would make to, you know, create something for the home for? Um, I feel like collecting fabrics that you've already got at home, that you already know the texture and the feel of and how things are, um, how they drip, is a really good way of learning more about the fabric before you go out and buy something that might not be what you want for the project you are looking for. Number six on this list is to research, watch, learn as much as you can. If you are really serious about getting into sewing and it's something that you want to do as a hobby or even as a business, I would suggest looking as many blogs and YouTube videos and even maybe a course just to help you get started and feel a bit more confident, confident in where you're going. When I was younger, my grandma used to sew and she would make dresses. She actually made all three of her daughter's wedding dresses. She used to make me little dresses all the time. 
Um, she didn't really ever teach me, but it was something I picked up on and enjoyed. So when I got to high school, it was something I did there in textiles. And then I went on to college and I did a bit more there. And then eventually I went to university to do a historical costume course. So my skills were just like little bits each go. I never sat and fully spent the time in my own time to learn through a course or watching videos or anything like that. I just learnt by doing. It did take me longer. So if you're somebody who likes to kind of really strike while the iron's hot, I'd look at going on maybe a course. You can do sewing clubs. Uh, there's, you know, you can find a local sewing club or a sewing course that is nearby. Um, I know that places such as Skillshare and there's loads of online platforms that you can find courses to do online. Um, or you can watch YouTube videos and blogs. I have a lot of posts that are helpful for beginners getting started and I know there's a lot of content on YouTube to help beginners get started with sewing. So I would look around um, and even if you've got a friend or know anybody that already sews then maybe look and ask them if they don't mind teaching you, giving you some tips. Um, join a Facebook group. They are full of people with information that have tried all these things, failed and now they've tried again and succeeded. Um, and there's just a wealth of information out there so there's no reason why you can't succeed at what you want to do. So the most important thing is whether you're doing this for business or for a hobby, you should be enjoying yourself. You don't need all the latest gadgets and tools, I definitely don't. And you definitely don't need a fancy sewing room or setup, I definitely don't. It, it all depends on you and how you want to make it work. If you're really looking forward to getting started with sewing, then do it. Go out there and grab the fabric scissors, grab your sewing machine and just get going. Try anything that you think is going to bring you joy because that is the most important part of it at the end of the day. Thank you for joining me on this video. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been helpful to those who might be struggling on getting started or know where to go with things. If you've liked this video, please give it a like. It really helps my channel get discovered in the YouTube alg algorithm. And if you're looking for more helpful videos and walkthroughs of how to use a sewing machine, how to use other types of sewing materials and tools, then stick around, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.